Hello! On this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up the address range for a solenoid controller uh, so that you can attach more than one to the same Megapoints controller's network. Now the procedure I'm going to show you works equally well for the Kato stall motor driver as well. It's the same sort of addressing software on it, it's got the same features. So despite our, the, the fact that I'll be demonstrating it on this board, it works equally well on this as well. If we look at a typical network, um, imagine each one of these is a point motor. Now, if you have a starter kit or more than one board, then you'll want to address them all. And here I've shown the first 24. And you can go up to a maximum of 192 devices on this network for point control. Now, the way our system works, because of the original servo controller, it used to do blocks of 12. So when you set an address up for the first one, it would start at number two and give you 12 devices. Uh, moving on from the servo controller, when we devised the solenoid driver and the Kato driver, we reduced it to six to fit all of the features we wanted. So what we've effectively done is split the 12 in half and given them a low range and a high range. Now you may ask, why does the first block start at address number two? The reason for that is the multi-panel or device that's controlling it is address number one. So we start at two and uh, build up from there. So on this little diagram here, if I can get to it, there we go. You can see I've taken the first 24 addresses uh, for the first 24 devices and I've split them into the low and the high. So the first one would be address two and the second range of 12 would be address three. This is also two and also three. The difference is the jumper that sets the range, which is this little guy, let's bring him into focus, this jumper allows you to switch between the first six or the second six in the block of 12 simply by adjusting it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hook one up and we'll walk through it together and I'm going to set a device for all four sets of addresses. Here's a solenoid driver with six solenoids attached and I have here a test panel attached to a multi-panel processor with 24 buttons on it. So you're going to see this operate throughout the entire 24 button range. So let's take a look at the jumpers that affect the address range or the addressing of this board. The first jumper must be in the ADDR range or to the right. By dropping it on the right hand side, you're configuring these two buttons to control the address rather than on the left, the PWR or power output adjustment, but we'll cover that in a separate video. And this jumper here sets the range for low or high, which is the first or the second six. So to set the board back to its default configuration before we start using it, what you do, you simply make sure that we have the jumper at the bottom on the address and the middle jumper to the left on the low. Press and hold both buttons, turn the board on, you'll see both LEDs come on for a second and that's it, the board is now reset and after a couple of seconds you'll observe the LEDs flashing again and run it going through their normal business with the run light flickering every now and then. I now have a multi-panel processor here and on this I have 24 buttons in groups of eight so that I can fire off points addressed uh, one to 24. And what I'll do, I'll go through the various address ranges on this and you can see how it's done. So first of all, I'll connect the network to the multi-panel. You hear the uh, solenoids clunk as the panel tells them which position to go to. I'll turn the power off, check my jumpers are in the right position, press and hold both buttons, 
turn on, both LEDs come on and the board is now in its default state. And the default state is address two, which is the first block, and one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if I press the buttons one to six, you should hear and see the solenoids move. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I press seven and eight, nothing happens because this device is not configured. Okay. Let's go from the first range. This is it here, we've just set low one to six, and I'll change the high jumper and address seven to 12. And all I do is pull this jumper out and plug it in on the high side. Now, the first six are being ignored because we've now jumpered up to the next range. So I should get seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, how do we get 13? Well, 13, according to the chart, is address three low. So 13, 14 to 18. So what I'll do, I'll move this jumper to low. This jumper is on address. So all I need to do is press the up button once. And what you'll see when I press it is the address LED will flash once. And there's three flashes there which show that the address has now moved up to range three. So if I press number 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, we're now addressing all of the uh, solenoids in this address range here. And to address 19 to 24, Whilst it's on address three, all I have to do is pull the jumper out and put it onto the high range. And you'll hear them already jumping as the, as the multi-panel controls them. So let's try the last six, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. The previous range, which was 13 to 18, of course is now not being observed by this. So if I change them, nothing will happen. So I hope this Back to Basics video gives you an idea on how to set the address ranges up. Um, if you're going for ranges beyond the first 24 onwards, all you need to do is look at the guide and simply go uh, address two, address three, the next block would be address four, address five, and so on, all the way up to a maximum of 192. And the method I've used is identical for the stall motor or Kato driver as well. You have the same address buttons, the same power stroke address range jumper here, and the same low and high jumper there. Now, once you have this installed, let's go back to low, and I'll set the address down because I want it to be on the first six. We can test it. One, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. If I want to lock that to make sure I don't accidentally knock the buttons again, all I have to do is remove this lower jumper, turn it 90 degrees and drop it back onto the center. So it's now sitting here connected to neither pin. This means that when I press the address buttons, nothing happens and it's still on address range one to six. I hope this helps and thanks for watching.